Yeah, thank you very much, Mark, and, and, uh, and uh, for the kind invitation to, to present on the, our concept of biofilm on our work. Uh, now, Kate's going to do the bulk of the presentation, so uh, she's going to share a, a screen. Uh, and Kate is a very talented a, a research a associate in, in, in my lab, who's been working with me for five years. So, uh, biofilm, so in my lab, what we're very uh, interested in is the control of microorganisms. Uh, particularly in healthcare, control of pathogens. So naturally, we, we are interested in, uh, in, in biofilms. And a, a quite a few years ago, uh, Kate, would you mind the, the next slide, please? Uh, uh, quite a few years ago, we were quite interested talking by, uh, with a colleague uh, in uh, Macquarie University, Karen Vickery, on a dry surface biofilm. And I, I got very intrigued with that concept. And uh, those dry surface biofilms are uh, biofilms uh, formed a, on a dry surfaces, dry environmental surfaces. On, on those would really be the, the, the majority of the surfaces you would find in, in healthcare environment. So part of this talk today is, is going to be about those new entities. On, on dry surface biofilm is quite a, a really new concept uh, in the field of infection control. Uh, they have been demonstrated quite a number of countries and everywhere we look for them in healthcare settings, we do find them. But there are a few caveats about those dry surface biofilm, and I, th I think it will be, uh, it'll become very clear when, when Kate starts talking uh, about that. So uh, in, in my lab, we, uh, with the lab of, of Karen Vickery in, in Macquarie University, we, we are the two sort of world leader in dry surface biofilm. We, we published quite the bulk of the papers between those two labs um, to really to exemplify and, and to put some so uh, I guess interest to especially infection control, a, uh, a professionals on the uh, issues of dry surface biofilms. Now, when we're talking about healthcare uh, infections, uh, of course, a water is a major a major uh, problems on particularly drains. Uh, on I, you may be aware uh, that there is a certainly at the moment the current of, of, of thoughts that a uh, sink in uh, especially in ICUs are probably a bad idea because uh, sinks are not necessarily used for washing your hands but to dispose of waste. Uh, and a, when you've got microorganisms in, uh, in the drains, then uh, they make the way uh, back up to the sink and then they spread everywhere. So we were very much interested in a, uh, the drain uh, aspect of, a, uh, of biofilms as well, with the idea of how to control them. Uh, so we also doing quite a lot of work on that. And uh, because we are university, uh, in my mind is how can we develop a reproducible model where we can study the impact and efficacy of interventions to control those drain biofilm uh, particularly in healthcare settings. So again, the second part of this talk, which will also be given by, by Kate, because she's far better than me at, at presenting, um, is going to be about drain by films on the model we have developed in our lab to really study uh, the impact of new formulation, for example, but also what happened to those biofilm after you add some disinfection in the drain. And hopefully you will find those presentations quite interesting. So I'm going to stop here from now, and I will come back at the end of this presentation to tell you a bit more what's next in my lab, what we need to do about those uh, dry surface biofilm and drain biofilm. So I'm going to pass on now to my talented colleague, Kate, and she will give deliver that, that bulk of that, that presentation. Kate. Good morning. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, for the webinar. Um, I think I will start with the definition. So what are dry surface biofilms? Uh, I think all of you probably know what biofilms are. Uh, they are uh, communities of microorganisms growing together attached to a surface. Uh, dry surface biofilms uh, are the ones that are growing in the dry habitat. So the habitats that are low in moisture uh, with varying temperature and nutrient level. Uh, it's, uh, they are much less research than the um, wet biofilms and are more resistant to the disinfection. Uh, so uh, we published some of the uh, hospital studies on the dry surface biofilms. Uh, so I wanted to uh, give you insight into uh, our findings. And uh, generally in the multicenter study, uh, we sampled uh, 
various items from three different hospitals across UK, uh, from Scotland, uh, from England and from Wales. Uh, and we were looking into um, various items, including sanitizing bottles, patient folders, keyboards, um, patient chairs and, and so on. So all those items were terminally cleaned uh, according to the, uh, hospi each hospital regulation. So we're looking into uh, the dry surface biofilm diversity by using next generation sequencing. Uh, but we also were looking uh, into the um, antibiotic resistance with selective plates. We're also investigating the uh, dry surface biofilm appearance with scanning electron microscopy uh, and dry surface biofilm abundance by looking uh, how many of those items are actually contaminated with dry surface biofilm. Uh, in the second paper, uh, the one that was published uh, this year, we're also looking, uh, we focus on the hospital keyboards and we're looking into the dry surface biofilm and transferability uh, after just wiping with dry water and after the, the contamination. So when we got the samples, we had to process them. Uh, so first step was to cut them to size. It was quite challenging with some of the surfaces, for example, from the wooden trolley. Uh, but we managed in the end. Uh, after we aseptically cut the surfaces, uh, we rinse them with sterile water. Uh, it is to get rid of any planktonic cells, some debris, because, for example, the hospital keyboards were quite contaminated with dust. Uh, with those ones um, that we rinsed, we, we did uh, SEM imaging, and part of the uh, samples uh, we were swabbing them, because that's the uh, common method to check whether the surface. Uh, was effectively decontaminated or whether it's contaminated at all. So it's like quite uh, widely used method in hospitals. Um, when there was no growth uh, on after the swabbing technique, uh, we were uh, putting the samples in the uh, enrichment broth to promote the growth of dry surface biofilm. Uh, so part of those samples were sequenced with next generation sequencing. Uh, another part was uh, being captured on the selective media. So here you can see some images of uh, dry surface biofilms. Um, they were generally uh, growing in aggregates, unevenly scattered throughout the surface. So it was quite difficult to find them. Uh, but here are images on the left is of the patient folder. And on the right, you can see an uh, image from the, uh, the chair from the patient room. Um, when we looked into the composition of those dry surface biofilms, we found that it's mostly from Staphylococcus and Bacillus genera. Uh, what was really interesting is the fact that there was not really much of a difference between hospitals. Like in all the hospitals, it was Bacillus and Staphylococcus dominating. And it's worth noting that those hospitals are quite in far locations from each other. Uh, when it comes to our keyboard uh, paper, uh, we looked into the antibiotic resistance uh, of those dry surface, of the bacteria growing in those dry surface biofilms. And to, to our surprise, we, we found quite a lot of them being um, multi drug resistant MDROs. Um, some of them were quite surprising, for example, uh, multi drug resistant Acinetobacter, because we, we haven't observed uh, infection rates matching the amount of those uh, growing in dry surface biofilms. Uh, but what is important here is the fact that they are able to survive uh, in the environment in those dry surface biofilms. So they are a potential threat to patients and staff. Uh, we also looked into the transferability of bacteria from those surfaces because um, if they are just growing on the surface and it's not possible to pick them up, obviously they won't pose a threat. But we we're looking what happens if we wipe the surface with sterile wipes and then press the surface against the agar. And we seen that uh, almost 70% of those surfaces were transferring bacteria. Uh, but we also wanted to know what happens when we properly decontaminate uh, the surface. So in that case, we use uh, 1000 ppm sodium hypochlorite, which is widely used in UK hospitals for disinfection, 1000 ppm chlorine. Uh, it's, it's actually in the NHS guidelines. But still over half of the samples were transferring bacteria. So it's not really good. <laughs> so from those two studies, we could sum uh, up that dry surface biofilms are a problem that are quite widespread 
think over 90% of all the samples we collected were actually contaminated with dry surface biofilms. Uh, what is quite terrifying is the fact that even after the contaminating those surfaces, they still transfer bacteria um, and they cannot be detected by swabbing. So if the surface is cleaned and then later it's audited and to see whether it's safe to be used, um, the swabbing technique might not pick up uh, the, the biofilm. So like we would think that there's like a false sense of security. And also the fact that uh, those surfaces have uh, gram positive bacteria, including some pathogens associated with uh, hepcar associated infections. We also have seen some, like a little bit of the gram negatives as well. Uh, and yeah, another thing is like they are transferable and can regrow one day after uh, provided with nutrients. So there is no um, standardized method for growing dry surface biofilms, and there's no method for testing the efficacy of the treatments against them. Uh, that's why we developed a model in Cardiff uh, for growing those biofilms. We started with uh, Saphorius. Uh, basically, the model is quite simple. It's a dimentation protocol, um, and it's based on the subsequent cycles of uh, hydration and dehydration. It's to um, mimic the, uh, the hydration, the hydration of the surface in, in the hospital. So we were growing those biofilms with uh, organic load and without organic load. And as you can see on the SEM image, and, uh, at first you might see that it was less a biofilm with organic load, but actually it was um, quite a lot of layers and a lot of uh, EPS secreted by the cells. So you couldn't really see them through the, through the layers but they were really dense and much more resistant uh, than the biofilms grown without uh, organic load, which was something that we actually expected. And from like that confocal images, you can see that over the time, uh, the dry surface biofilm part of it will die, but still quite a lot of the uh, bacteria survive. So uh, it is quite interesting. And yeah, as I mentioned before, there is no standardized uh, protocol for testing um, disinfectant efficacy against dry surface biofilm. And that is why we developed one as well. Uh, so we, uh, based on the ASTM test uh, that uses a Y operator, because we believe it's reflecting the most the actual treatment in real life. So when we're growing the disc, uh, the biofilm on the disc, uh, then we're wiping it with using this machine is a quite good one because it, it applies the same pressure and the same movement. So it's like quite uniform results that you can get out of it. Um, and in the protocols, like most of the standardized methods for looking at the efficacy of a disinfectant against bacteria, uh, we focus on log reduction. But we believe that in the case of the biofilm, that is not enough. As you could see from our previous hospital multicenter study, um, those bacteria can easily transfer from dry surface biofilms. So that is why we're also looking at transferability uh, after the treatment. Um, so it was determined how well bacteria can transfer from clean surface. But we were also looking into regrowth. So we know that those biofilms regrow quite quickly. So we're looking how long it takes for the, bio, for the biofilm to recover after the treatment. So we're kind of focusing on three different factors and all of them put together were giving us information about product efficacy. So it's, it's quite a big table. We tested quite a lot of different uh, products. Uh, vast majority of them were uh, available through NHS supply. And as you can see, quite a lot of them had good uh, performance in terms of uh, log reduction. Uh, there is no uh, pass or fail criteria in the case of, in the, uh, of the ISTM test, so we had to um, establish our arbitrary one. Uh, but still, quite a lot of them had good performance against the biofilm. But then, when you look uh, uh, of the effect of the disinfectants on direct transferability uh, or cross transferability, in that case, we were um, touching the treated surface with glove and then touching with the glove to the uh, agar. Um, it's like many of them that were quite good in uh, reducing the numbers of bacteria were actually not good in preventing the transferability or uh, stopping the regrowth. Uh, what is quite 
interesting here is when you see the treatments without mechanical action, so vaporized hydrogen peroxide or cold gas plasma treatment, they cannot really touch the biofilm. Uh, the log reduction and the transferability is like really high and they regrow really quickly. So that's quite interesting to see that those um, non-mechanical treatments are not able to, to touch the biofilm. Uh, but yeah, what, what I wanted to say mostly based on this table is that the log reduction is not enough when we look into the biofilms and how they can be uh, treated with the disinfectants. Um, it is not really reflecting the overall performance of the product. Uh, we believe it's really important to look into transferability and recovery of dry surface biofilm after uh, the treatment with the product. So I wanted to move on onto a second big part of, of the work we do in Cardiff, which are drain biofilms. Uh, you're probably quite aware of those ones. Um, those are basically uh, wet hydrated biofilms growing in the sink. So either um, partially uh, dried uh, in the around the strainer where they are not really um, immersed in the liquid because they were just partially like periodically going to be um, wetted or those are the biofilms growing in traps, so in a really good pool of nutrient environment. And it was proven already that those drained biofilms pose a healthcare associated risk. Uh, however, there's not really much of an evidence of how products are effective against those biofilms. We will have quite a lot of studies on investigations uh, in which hospitals were tackling the um, in infections. Uh, but they don't really look into like exact numbers of how effective those um, investigations were. So we, we don't really have much of the uh, evidence and we don't have really much of the data on that. Uh, that is why in Cardiff we develop a model for uh, mimicking a trap uh, in the sink. So as you can see on the scheme, uh, we were um, looking at the front, middle and back sections that would be um, mimicking a section around the strainer, then the middle section would be basically the body of the trap, and the back section would be the outlet tube. Uh, so we use sterile silicon cubic, and we also collected the mixed uh, species uh, from our communal sink. Um, and basically we were um, first inoculating the whole model for two days uh, in a static uh, condition, so there was no flow. Mm, it is to allow the cells to attach. And then it was followed by six days of um, media supply, which was like um, delivering flashes. It was to mimic the uh, sink operation. Um, so here is like a more wide scheme of how the whole uh, system looked like. Uh, so basically the media was um, supplied through peristatic pump. Uh, we were flashing the, the whole system every two hours for 10 seconds. Um, and it was going through the trap to the waste. And we also looked into how our biofilm developed because initially we're looking at different lengths of growth. Um, after two days of inoculation, you can see it's like quite even, evenly scattered uh, small colonies of the um, biofilm. But then within time and when we applied uh, some of the flow of the media, you could see that they grow much bigger. And at the end of the uh, biofilm formation, eight day, we actually got really nice thick biofilm and you could see it by naked eye. Uh, we had quite a lot of species identified in the biofilm. Uh, it was a little bit to our terror because that was from our communal thing. Uh, but basically there was mostly uh, Klebsiella species, Enterobacter, Serratia, uh, e. coli, but also many other, we also seen some pseudomonas. And similarly, as in the case of dry surface biofilm, uh, we believe that it's not enough just to look at the log reduction. So in this case, log recovery, because we're looking not at how many bacteria were removed by the treatment, but we're looking how many bacteria we can recover after the treatment. So um, on the right side, you can see two graphs. So the first one is um, after uh, treating the, the biofilm model for uh, three consecutive um, times. We had to do that because after the first dose, we actually didn't see much of a difference. It was really difficult to, to touch the biofilm. 
Uh, that is why we had to do three consecutive doses uh, on three days. Uh, so that's the data after that. As you can see, the front section is the one that's most uh, eradicated with most of the treatments. It is quite logical because that will be the one that's exposed to the highest concentration of, of the disinfectant. Uh, and then the second graph shows how all of those regrow after four days. So you can see, like for example, with uh, sodium hypochlorite 1000 ppm, um, after like three consecutive doses, you you lower the bacteria in the trap to like around two, three logs. But then four days after is like regrow to over four. <laughs> so it's all kind of coming back to normal. Uh, and after a little bit more time, it will be all be back uh, to how it was before. Um, it is really, really difficult to eradicate the bugs from this model. It's, it's really challenging. Uh, as I said, the biofilm recovers quickly. Um, the only limitation of the model that I wanted to mention uh, is the fact that it does not um, well mimic the front section, because it's not reflecting the complexity of the strainer uh, uh, structure uh, around the um, entrance of the sink. So that is what we are currently working on. So I think that will be all from my side. So to Jaif. Yeah, thank you, Kate. Uh, so I'll take over for just a minute. I mean, what's what's next? I mean, with the, the dry surface biofilm, um, uh, it, it is a, a, an interesting uh, story. Oh, Kate, your, 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 your slides disappeared. <laughs> Um, on, on two things, we, we, we believe uh, that a, um, in healthcare, when we've got recurrent infections and where you can't really find the source of that, we believe the dry surface biofilm may be involved in that. So what we're currently trying to do at the moment is to understand the clinical significance of those dry surface biofilm in healthcare. Uh, of course, dry surface biofilm will uh, also uh, impact other industry, and, and we believe uh, there could be uh, also present on widespread in the food manufacturing industry as well. Uh, the important thing, again, to remember is when the surface is dry, you cannot detect them by swabbing or contact plates. Uh, but when they're being disturbed, when they're wet, then you, you, you would have transfer. As for the, the drain biofilm, uh, again, our system is, 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 uh, is very interesting. Uh, what Kate didn't mention um, is um, uh, depending on what product you use, so if you use sodium apochlorite to destroy your drain biofilm, then the, dra the, the biofilm, as Kate mentioned, will regrow within very rapidly. Uh, an identical biofilm on that include your MDRO. Um, if you use another type of product, then you completely uh, change the composition of those complex biofilm or you regrow a different type of biofilm. Uh, and in that case, for example, with parasitic, you regrow a biofilm. Uh, composed mainly of spore forming, so all the bacillus, non-pathogenic one. So there's still quite a lot of, of, of uh, understanding of what's going on with this product to control drain biofilm and how do we apply that in the practice. So there's, there's quite a few people we, 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 we thank, uh, we help us through the study, either the uh, next, ne next slide, uh, uh, Kate. Um, uh, lots of people that help us through that journey of uh, looking at dry surface biofilm on, on the drain biofilms. And of course, Kate and I will be available to uh, answer any questions in the future. Next slide, we'll have uh, uh, our contact details. And I see in the chat, there's a couple of, of questions. Thank you very much for, for listening to us. Ma, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, jean And thank you, Kate. Um, as Johnny indicated, if you had did wish to make contact with any of the speakers, please either contact them directly or via us, the meeting organisers. There are a couple of questions which I think we've got time to take. If not, we can deal with them later. Um, Kate, I think there's one you may you may be answering now, but if you could maybe give a verbal answer as well. How do you how you, about how you create the staff dry biofilm model? How much is the continuous switch from a wet environment to a dry environment? really recapitulating the normal formation of a dry biofilm? So we have this so-called wet phase. Uh, we inoculate the cells uh, onto the uh, stainless steel disc for two days. And after that, we drain out the media and we allow the biofilm uh, to be in a so-called dry phase for another two days. And after that, we again add the media, but this time without any bacteria in it. 
So I hope that answers. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And if John, it didn't, maybe you could type the follow up question. Yeah, maybe I'll add just one thing. I mean, John, it is a difficult one because in practice, what we believe it, it's the dry surface biofilm a formation is much, much longer where you've got a uh, hydration on surfaces, for example, through cleaning, but you've got food sometime or nutrients on the surfaces. Unless if they're not being dealt with, then you allow the growth of the microorganisms. I mean, what Kate didn't mention is when we've got sample from the hospital, those dry surface biofilms, they're not homogeneous. You'll find them scattered around the surfaces. So again, that's why they might be very difficult to, uh, to detect. The, our model system, it's very homogeneous. It's all a, uh, across the biofilm. There is some limitation as to are they identical? The answer is, is no, because uh, we're doing monospecies biofilm. We're doing also dual species biofilm now. Uh, what we've got from the hospitals are, are very complex biofilm. But uh, our system is really was a, an academic one to understand uh, the formation of the dry surface biofilm on whether or not we can use a model to test the efficacy of the product. Now, as you could see with, with Kate's uh, slide, then it's been very successful. On, on show really the limitation of interventions. Great, thank you. Uh, and one final question, um, which is, would to either of you really, would be would microbes from a non-hospital environment, such as from an open window or potted plants, and less frequent cleaning with disinfectants, lead to the colonization with dry biofilms of non-pathogenic microbes? Yeah, if you don't mind, Kate, I'll take that one. The answer is, is yes. I mean, we're doing, again, lab dual species biofilm because we're interested at the impact of non-pathogenic species, so for example, Bacillus lichenoformis, and they form very nice dry surface biofilm. So we do believe they're there. Uh, uh, they might not be really clinically significant. Uh, we're more interested in healthcare because I, we know those dry surface biofilm harbor pathogens. But uh, I would guess, yeah, they're very, very widespread. No, definitely. Great. Thank you. Thank you both very much for your excellent presentation very very interesting and important for this field